Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the guest segment of our show, Big Plantation Live, brought to you by FPRNRadio.com. That is our guest bringing you in, Robert Luciani, with the song Morning Star uh, by Means and off their album, The Didact. And uh, Robert is uh, doing, doing this all the way from uh, Stockholm, Sweden. So uh, it's great to have you with us. Thanks for joining us. Hi, Mike. Thanks for having me on. No problem, man. My my pleasure. So, Robert, you were, you're the uh, the former vocalist for a, a, a pretty popular band in the metal scene, uh, Vildharta, also from from Sweden. And uh, so, I, I guess this is kind of your uh, your side project, I guess you could say, because there's definitely some some clear differences in style between um, between Means End and and Vildharta. Yeah, well, uh, Means End right now is my main project, uh, seeing as how I'm not in Biljata anymore. But um, uh, we have a, a much more unified uh, vision of where we want the music to go, whereas in Biljata, uh, a lot of the members had uh, you know different influences and different ideas. Uh, so we were all headed in many directions, uh, which is one of the reasons why I think it worked better for me to be in a band like uh, Means End. Yeah, one thing that uh, that just reaches out and grabs you from from the music right from the start, uh, and that's the reason why I picked the particular track that we uh, we introed in uh, Morning Star is is your vocal delivery. I, I think a lot of um, because we have a very diverse audience. This isn't necessarily a metal show. <laughs> you know what I mean? We we interview uh, you know people from all different genres and stuff like that. Uh, is, is your vocal delivery? It, it kind of flips the metal formula on its head where a lot of people uh, will do harsh vocals and kind of feature some cleans or sung vocals, whereas you uh, do mostly sung vocals and, uh, and feature some harsh vocals. Was that, was that a decision on your part because you wanted to have more of a, uh, a focus on the, on the lyrics? No, you know, um, I, I still consider myself a hobbyist, although a very passionate hobbyist with regards to music and art and all this kind of thing, um, because my, my main profession is computers. So, you know, when I started, um, I had I was a fan of bands that had a lot of harsh vocals and I just couldn't emulate them. I try to scream and my throat would hurt. And the only thing I could do uh, when I started in Villata, you know, they were asking me, uh, they heard my clean vocals and said, let's, uh, let's uh, uh, work together. And I wanted to incorporate some harsh vocals, but uh, the growl was the only thing I could do without, without uh, anything hurting. But since then, I've, I've developed it. And, you know, I just want to try and see <laughs> how many sounds I can get out of my voice. Um, at, not at the same time, but uh, on the same album, I suppose. I just want to try and, and see, you know, uh, what the limits uh, of my voice are a little bit like Bruce Lee, you know, you want to try to uh, push the limits of, of yourself as a person and see, you know, how far you can reach. Yeah. And I would, I would definitely say it goes pretty far on this album. I got to ask, do you have like a, do you have any kind of like background in opera or, or anything like that? That's the only way I could describe uh, okay. some of the, the, the sung vocals in, in this album. Uh, no background in opera. I, I've, been in a lot of musicals when I was younger and in high school I, I was in uh, musicals I never did Phantom of the Opera which would have been the one that I really wanted to do but you know we did Grease and all that kind of stuff so I suppose that's the extent of my uh, uh, vocal training so I I mean, you you hear the word progressive metal or progressive music a lot, um, and I, and this would definitely fall under that. But I, I feel that kind of cheapens the the, uh, the the sound you guys go for because being being a uh, something that came after Vildharta, uh, you, you most people I think would expect it to be a a quote unquote gent band, and I would say it's not really one of those kind of music or one of those kinds of bands. How how would you actually describe the the sound because it is pretty unique. Well, everybody knows that real gent bands deny being gent, so <laughs> we're, def we're definitely not gent, uh, just to be clear about that. But uh, I think, uh, the, you know, it's interesting what the word progressive is supposed to mean is it's supposed to mean avant-garde, you know, pushing the, the, the limits. And in a certain sense, gent has pushed a lot, a lot of limits with regards to technology, you know, being able to record at home and that kind of thing. Uh, home demos sound just uh, outstanding now, thanks to the power of computers and, and all the gadgets that you can buy. 
Uh, and the other thing that I think they've pushed forward is um, the me- the the mechanics of of uh, of playing the instruments. You know how virtuoso you have to be at playing the instruments. Uh, so in that sense, Gent has really pushed forward both both of those things uh, very far. But um, I, I still think that there's a lot of room to explore other things, like um, you know the things that the pioneers in classical music. Uh, have have lifted throughout throughout uh, the ages, like um, polyphony. You know, it's just one thing. And harmony, and a number of other things. Polyphony means that you have multiple uh, clearly distinguishable subjects playing different things with different uh, different notes, uh, different keys, uh, and different rhythms at the same time, but still sounding good together. Whereas I think most metal bands, uh, despite saying that they want to th- play outside the box, end up playing in the harmonic minor and uh, you know sticking to the formula. Uh, mm-hmm. I think, you know, uh, as a progressive band, I really uh, want to learn from the greats that went before us uh, and carved away um, in terms of harmonics, um, uh, rhythmics. Uh, and a number of other things. So for me, progressive means more than just being really uh, good at riffing on a guitar. It means bringing every aspect of of music uh, a step further. Yeah, I, I would definitely uh, agree. And it's it's a shame because uh, I think a lot of that gets lost. I mean, we heard uh, the producer, one of the producers over at uh, Sumerian Records, flat out say recently that uh, that some of their bigger bands like. Uh, uh, asking Alexandria and, and stuff like that, that basically they don't even try to be creative because of their crazy touring schedules and they don't get too much time to write. And so basically they just follow the the same formula and, and just keep pushing out the same kind of stuff. So I, I definitely really appreciate more of the... Uh, the un- the whole scene is niche, you know, in terms of metal, if that's what you want to call it, asking Alexandria, but that's another topic. The whole scene is niche, but I, I really appreciate the niche of the niche <laughs> that, that really drives the music forward. And I see a lot of that in, in uh, bands like Means End, Enville Harta, and, and things like that. I think it's very difficult, given the advent of social media, that bands really feel a pressure to release often, release high quality, and that kind of stuff. And, you know, I... I us in Means End, we, we feel a little bit guilty that the next record is going to take a long time to record and we won't be able to release anything. You know, I remember Bulb, uh, I think he wrote one time that um, he wanted to release snippets of the stuff that he was working on, but then people would uh, complain when the album came out and it was built on those snippets and they, oh, there's no new material on it and that kind of thing. So social media has really also added a, a lot of pressure on artists to change the way they uh, uh, you know, present their material to the fans. Yeah, abs- absolutely, and uh, and I don't feel they get rewarded enough a lot of times for uh, for the amount of content that is pushed out. Um, but you know, moving along, one one of the uh, one of the other things that really drew me to this particular album was um, you know looking at the lyrics. Uh, it, it's easily one of the most. Uh, intellectually stimulating albums I've seen in a while, I, I guess you could say. Um, what was what was your vision for what you were trying to convey with, with, with this album? Um, I wanted to write about everything that interests me. So I didn't, uh, you know, when we were in Villarta, uh, many people wanted to be involved in the lyrics. And uh, I had a really tough time with that because I, I didn't feel like I could sing somebody else's lyrics and that sort of thing. Um, so in that sense, um, Means End is really uh, good for me because I'm I'm 100% in control of exactly what I sing and also the lyrics. Um, so every song on the album is something that interests me, and uh, you know I could go go through the songs one by one, but the title, the didact, is uh, from the ancient Greek didaktikos, which means instructive. So um, I'm hoping maybe that uh, some of these songs could be uh, a gateway into. Um, you know, wanting to learn something more about a certain subject. Uh, so, um, for example, Omega Barrier in specific is a little bit related to computer science, and <clears throat> I speak about a few mathematic things that are, you know, uh, cross the border between computer science and philosophy and math and a few things. And uh, maybe some people can get inspired by that and pick up a book and uh, 
continue reading on the subject. Yeah, I, I agree. Omega Barrier was a uh, was a pretty interesting uh, track. In fact, let me. I'm going to read uh, a section of it. Uh, this is about halfway through the song. Uh, you've reached the Omega Barrier. You can't escape the system because it's built out of you. We see complex emergent phenomena from deep within bubble to the surface. The fits. The, this fits well with the observation that we simply can't force ourselves to describe the neural or even symbolic functions from when something like ambition emerges. It's just there. We could very well just be machines underneath it all and never be the wiser. Um, now, you, you had said that your, uh, your profession is, is in computers and, th- and that this kind of ta- uh, tackles uh, some computer-type issues. How, is is does transhumanism come into play here at all? And and if so, how do you feel about that particular uh, topic? Um, I'm not exactly sure what the the latest definition of transhumanism is, but uh, being a nihilist, I don't really place much weight into the significance of being human. So so for me, uh, you know, a lot of these issues, like um, you know, one of the, one of the movies that this song uh, is inspired by, uh, partially at least, is Ghost in the Shell. <laughs> where the main character is a an android or a cyborg rather uh which means she's half human and half uh, robot uh which makes it harder to dismiss um her as just a machine and uh but for me there's no difference really uh because I don't believe that there's anything more special to a human or a machine uh so it becomes more curiosities to me than actual you know dilemmas or moral issues or anything else like that so this song for me very much is about uh, Yodel's incompleteness theorem and, and uh, why we as humans can't understand uh, reasonably speaking uh, that there's nothing special about us because the sense of I or the sense of our self is so tangible you know, from within our own consciousness but that in itself doesn't mean that there's anything special about us um, well, and, and to go back and kind of clarify how I would uh, define transhumanism is just generally uh, the the combination of technology in human life to to become something more than human. Um, I, I think is a good uh, general general definition. Um, now, what what exactly? Why why exactly would you say that you feel that that um, you know, there's nothing special about us because we as, uh, you know, me and you, we discussed uh, privately on, on Facebook the other day some of uh, the philosophies that we discuss here on the show, such as anarchism, libertarianism. Uh, we as, as freedom lovers, we, we place great uh, value on the individual and, and the individual uh, just from being an individual human being is, is w- and our humanity, whether you want to call it the universe or God, the virtue of your humanity, uh, re- irregardless, um, is, is where we derive our rights from. So would you, would you, how do you feel about that kind of philosophy in you know, uh, comparison to, to, to nihilism? I understand. Um, I don't I don't really think that humans and individuals as such are are important. Uh, I think I am important and that's it. And uh, from that perspective, uh, I I think that the only logical uh, conclusion is is for me to voluntarily agree with other people uh, to do things together. Um, And, you know, all of the morals that come from that are, are derivatives um, I don't think that there has to be a, a logical, um, objective value to humans or individuals as such. And rights, uh, I don't really believe in rights either, uh, you know, um, that a human has a certain right. Where does he get that right from? The right comes from the sky, you know, from God, or whatever. I don't really believe that. I, I, I believe that uh, I have some genes, and they're telling me that I want to do stuff. They tell me, uh, you know, go make babies, go go become powerful, go have fun, that kind of thing. And uh, for me to do that, I have to interact with people, and I think that I can do more of that if I interact with people. And uh, the be- the best way to interact with people is to do so on good terms. And from there, I can get a lot of uh, a lot of morals and agreements with other people. Absolutely, and and even even that, uh, I think the key word that you used is is voluntary. That's that's a huge uh, word in in our whole philosophy. But I, I don't want to get caught up in, in all that. Um, moving moving along to to another song that uh, that really, um, you know, I touched with personally was uh, was Candle in the Dark. Um, 
and that's the opener off the the album. Um, again, I'm going to read some of the, the lyrics here. We wait for light, but behold darkness. This I profess. The more I learn, the less I know. I always wondered how it could be so. Perhaps the true delight is not knowing, but finding. Searching through a demon-haunted world, not knowing what I hope to find, the arc of my mind bends toward a singularity, accelerating the perception of time. Treading into the unknown, places where I'll be left alone, I'll use my mind as a wick and my soul as the oil to light the way just for a short while longer, like a candle in the dark. Um, if you could, ju- I mean, I-, I would definitely like to discuss your personal, uh, uh, you know, views on that, and I definitely have my views on it. Being, uh, you know, not only a radio show host but an activist, and in in my interactions with more and more musicians, uh, there's there's I see a lot of similarities in the lifestyle. So I kind of would like to uh, to hear your perspective on that. Well, I, I can say that it's flattering to to hear that uh, people can take this material and really make it into their own. Um, this song in particular, Candle in the Dark, I'm a little bit more happy with the lyrics than I am with Omega Barrier because uh, it's a little bit more poetic and artsy, whereas Omega Barrier was pretty terse and, and as a matter of factly, you know, with boring sentences, whereas this one has, you know, uh, my, soil, my soul as the oil to light the way and that kind of thing. Um, but the song itself, uh, Candle in the Dark, it pays homage to um, Carl Sagan's book, The Demon Haunted World, which is about dispelling myth and uh, and that type of thing. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of symbolism here. Um, Carl Sagan was an astrophysicist, so uh, I'm playing around with words in the middle and saying that uh, when I get really obsessed with something, I can't let it go, and, uh, you know, uh, that's the only thing that uh, envelops me and, and draws me into a little point and that kind of thing. And with the wordplay, I managed to make it sound like... Um, space stuff is going on you know like the way light bends towards a singularity and turns into a point um so i'm a little bit more happy with the artsy fartsy stuff that i (laughs) squeeze in that song but the actual lyrics themselves are about um you know the thirst for knowledge um that everything is dark and, and your reason is a little light that you can shine in different directions and try to find new things and uh i don't think anybody will deny that humans are have have an insatiable uh, curiosity, and and I certainly feel that way. Yeah, I, I definitely feel that way as as well. And um, you know, I like I said, I see a lot of parallels between uh, you know I, us as activists as well as um, those of you who are musicians. And uh, I, I see a lot of areas where the the two worlds almost kind of blend because what it says to me it, without without trying to sound you know uh, pretentious, I, I think it's. Uh, no stretch of the mind to imagine that there's a lot of things wrong in this world. Uh, there's a lot of uh, bad things going on and, and uh, a lot of people who might not understand how or why uh, those things are going on. And uh, I, I mean, you pretty much illustrated it perfectly using reason to shine light on the world. That's that's something that we as activists and why I started this whole show was to um, use what I've learned by looking into that darkness to uh, to kind of cast the opposite and and and, and give solutions and, and give you know explanations for why these things are going on, um, so that definitely hits home as like a, a personal journey that that I have gone through and and I know other activists have gone through and I'm sure um, people navigating in the music scene are as well. Um, now, kind of going along with that uh, uh, running yeah, I metaphor, I guess you could say. It reminded me, you know, we were chat- chatting the other day. Um, uh, privately, and uh, we talked about about science and how it's becoming uh, quite trendy. And you know, if a person gets interested in this song and uh, goes further and reads the Demon Haunted World uh, that Carl Sagan wrote, um, the interesting thing is that um, uh, science isn't just a product. Uh, and I think one thing that that um, I wish people would learn from this song is that science is a method. It's a method of learning. It's not a belief that you hold in that kind of thing. And it's very important, uh, you know, when searching for new knowledge that, that you use a correct method, um, a method that is verifiable, a method that's consistent and all that kind of thing. Uh, so there's a lot uh, of stuff that I don't really touch on in the lyrics themselves, uh, which I hope that readers, you know, can get inspired by and delve further into um, from the songs. Yeah, and, and you know what? That's actually... Um 
I, I start a lot of debates on my, my Facebook and stuff like that, and that's actually a very clear uh, and, and I think important distinction because I think a lot of people use uh, science as a belief or as a crutch, a crutch for their, their lack of belief is, is how I would describe it without looking into the method or the, the human element of the body of work that goes into science and where science has, has failed or been fallible because it is a trial and error based uh, approach to, um, to, uh, answering our problems in the human experience. So you do have error. And, and I think a lot of times people uh, ignore that and just say, oh, well, I'm going to go with this because it, it justifies my, my lack of faith or belief. Absolutely. And, and even the people that are interested in science, uh, I, I think, have been failed by the school systems uh, in the sense that, <clears throat> you know, there are a lot of a lot of things now that make our life better, um, like medicine and that sort of thing. And if you ask the average person uh, if, if antibiotics will help them uh, against the virus infection, they probably wouldn't know what to answer. But I think that's a very basic piece of science knowledge that all humans uh, in developed countries should be able to know. Um, so really, um, both science knowledge and the method of acquiring knowledge through the scientific method um, is something that uh, I think a lot of people could uh, could learn more about. Absolutely. Um, so I guess my last question, we got about three minutes uh, before the end of the segment here. I guess my last question is, I was talking about this overlap in the lifestyles of us as activists and uh, mm -hmm. musicians, and and that overlap that I see is that you know you, musicians they wear their heart on this on their sleeve to go out and leave the comforts of their normal life to follow their passions, uh, whether that be on the road or whatever. And I would say us as activists do the same thing uh, in that we leave the comforts of our own lives to go out and try to cause social change. Or you know we're not about politics here, but some people take that route and and leave the comforts of their home to do political change. What what do you feel is the role of social change within? Um, artists or musicians? Well, uh, you know, I've been thinking a lot in the past year what art is, and I think I wrote to you that uh, art is uh, communication between people with reasons stripped and emotions laid bare. So art is a very powerful form of communication because it, it goes past the brain and straight to the soul and, and can, can be very manipulative in that sense. Um, but I think that there's a responsibility among artists, uh, that there has to be a, a responsibility uh, in artists that want to uh, affect other people um, to educate themselves uh, on the subjects in, in an honest fashion. Um, you know, it's nothing that, that I'd be able to enforce, but it's something that I would hope if an artist wants to, you know, uh, push a certain idea, uh, that they really make sure that uh, they're honest with themselves about learning about that idea and, and, um, and viewing it objectively before they try to um, use art as a medium to affect people. Absolutely. Because education so and uh, yeah, education and, and introspective uh, reflection are, are definitely important in, in all aspects of life. We're, we're coming up against the break here. We got about a minute. So if you want to just uh, – Thank you, thank you for the interview. That was actually really awesome. That was what that's, that was uh, as intellectually like that was stimulating <laughs> as the album itself. If you could just uh, give everybody, uh, where can they find you? Where can they find Means End? Definitely pick up the album, The Didact. But uh, <clears throat> yeah, pick up the album, The Didact. Uh, go to MeansEnd.net, download the uh, compendium in the download section, and read about what the lyrics are about. We're going to be in a cave for the next year because the next release that's coming out is going to be uh, so massive that um, I'm a bit overwhelmed by it. So uh, I'll see you in a while uh, with something new. That's awesome. And, and you know, you're, you guys have an EP that's out for free if anybody wants to sample, right? Yeah, absolutely. That, uh, the songs are on the album also, but uh, they sound a bit different on the EP. So, yeah, go ahead and grab that. And all awesome. our tracks are on YouTube also. So. Awesome. Well, Robert, thanks a lot for your time. Thank you. All right, and that, that concludes the guest segment. We'll see you guys on the other side. Thanks for listening to The Big Plantation on FPRNradio.com. <laughs>